Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and recently I picked up a new monitor, the AOC Aegon AG27 1QX, and thought after having it for a few weeks now would be a good time to share my thoughts on it. First up, this is my first and only gaming monitor. I have been upgrading my PC setup over the last year, and a monitor was the last bit I needed, but I am in no way an expert on the subject and have always usually been in a position of getting second-hand or budget monitors. This won't be a big comprehensive review, but more of a regular consumer look at this product. I suggest checking out Tom's Hardware's article if you're interested in all the technical details. I stumbled upon the AOC Aegon by chance, and it hits almost all the checkboxes I wanted. It's 27 inches, 1440p TN panel, 1 millisecond response time, and has a high refresh of 144Hz. What it doesn't have is an IPS panel and G-Sync, but for the great price of $400, I decided to go for it. So first up, build quality is fantastic. The base and stand seem to be solid aluminum and have a good amount of weight to them. The backside of the monitor has a great red and black finish, and though you'll never see it once you put it on your desk, it's a nice touch. Beyond its size and resolution, it features things like USB 3 pass-through, headphone and microphone pass-throughs, a headphone holder, and a seemingly pointless remote control. Seriously, it's stupid and just takes up space on your desk. As with almost all other gaming monitors, the screen can be moved up and down, side to side, and tilted up and down. This is a great feature, but once you get it into a nice spot, you won't be using it much. However, this does make it flexible for moving to a new desk or setup in the future. As far as inputs go, you've got a single DisplayPort 1.2 port, two HDMI 2.0 ports, one DVI port, and surprisingly, a classic old D-Sub VGA port. This is a great set of inputs and should cover almost any device you own, including your computer and game consoles. There is also a set of built-in speakers, though I would suggest using something else. They have some terrible range and are pretty distorted, but they do work if you're desperate. There are a vast amount of options you can choose from in the built-in menu, and it should be no surprise that the menu controls are terrible, just like every other monitor ever. To be fair, they are not the worst menu controls I've used, but it's certainly not an enjoyable experience. Several presets come with the monitor, but honestly they all suck. Every single one of them. The biggest issue with this monitor is its terrible calibration and base settings. I followed Tom's hardware settings and it looks great. If you use presets, it doesn't. There are several different game modes for different types of games, but I saw no point in using this feature as they tend to change the color and brightness greatly, and I've always just preferred one nice calibrated setting. If you get this monitor, don't expect it to look great out of the box. I had a moment of sheer terror when I saw how horrible 1440p looked initially, and was suddenly dreading the return process before I calmed down and changed the settings. Once you get a nice calibration to your preference, the monitor's panel is fantastic overall. The biggest issue I've ran into is backlight bleed. Backlight bleed is mostly unavoidable and is usually simply a result of poor manufacturing quality. The AOC Aegon has a strip of backlight bleed on the bottom of my panel, which is very noticeable on a dark screen at night. However, beyond the one spot, the rest of the monitor has no bleed, so while it would be nice to get a completely clean picture, it's just part of buying budget quality monitors. And while the bleed is noticeable at night, I can't see it at all throughout the day, and unless the screen is dark at the bottom, it's almost unperceivable. Reading other reviews has shown this is a bit of a lottery. Some have no bleed, some have bleed like mine, and others have severe bleeding. So it'll be up to you if you want to go through the painful RMA process to try your luck again. And actually, there is one other big gripe, and that's the aluminum stand. If you look closely in this shot, you'll see an odd line. This is a result of the two stand parts rubbing against each other, causing a scratch across the surface when the stand is rotated. If I didn't love this monitor so much, I would have returned it. But since it's a small cosmetic issue that's not noticeable on my desk, I've accepted it. Still, not what you want after buying a brand new monitor. I haven't seen many complaints of this online, so maybe I just got unlucky. Overall, the picture quality once calibrated is fantastic, and native 1440p looks great at 27 inches. It's clear and crisp and will immediately change how you look at your old 1080p screen. As far as high refresh goes, it's sad I can't show how awesome it is. Some people claim they can't see much of a difference, but at least starting at 100Hz, gameplay becomes incredibly smooth. Even just moving windows around makes your computer feel more snappy. Sadly, I've never had an IPS display, so I can't speak to the issues of TN panels. 
TN panels have bad viewing angles, but honestly, this has never been a problem since I'm usually directly in front of my monitor anyway. As far as color reproduction and clarity go, I can't complain, but I also have no reference to something better. I can say the monitor has some issues with upscaling 1080p, where noticeable scan lines or screen door effect is noticeable. If you're planning to use something like the PS4 or even PS4 Pro, it seems to be beneficial to put some space between you and the monitor to mitigate the scan lines. Beyond less than stellar upscaling, cosmetic issues, and a few problems associated with my HDMI splitter, the AOC Aegon AG27 1QX is great. If you have a graphics card that can produce frames in your favorite games over 60, then it's worth it. Even without G-Sync, I haven't seen a single tear, and being lifted from the jaws of V-Sync has been wonderful. Obviously, if you're playing something with insanely high frame rates, you may run into issues, but I'm guessing you'll already know that if it's a concern. As I've said, I got the Aegon for $400, and I think at that price you can't do much better considering the feature set. High frame rate sweet spot price 4K is still several years away, and I think in the meantime this 1440p monitor is going to serve me quite well. Okay everybody, I guess that's about it. If you liked this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, I'm sure you know what to do. Leave me a comment in the comments section. And as always, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one in the future. Coming up soon, I'll have a video on something. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I'm always working on a new video. If you want to get in touch with me directly or see what I'm working on, uh, follow me on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching.